Hello everyone, welcome back to Edible Abundance Homestead. I'm Ginger and today is April 14th. Um, so it's Tuesday, so I'm out to my garden to plant my radishes on Tuesday. I'll show you what I have going on here already. So things are still kind of small, still kind of slow getting going. I was looking at some pictures um, from previous garden years and I feel like things are growing really slowly, but they are absolutely as big now as they have been at about this same time in previous years. So it's just this, you know, excitement. Like I would grow faster everything. But anyway, um, here's last week's radishes. Now one thing I'm noticing is that these guys um, have really good germination from them. Um, some of the previous weeks, they're a little more patchy with the, um, what germinated and like where they are. And I was blaming that on not being quite careful enough with like smoothing out where I was planting them and that sort of thing. But I'm noticing that the seeds that came from Baker Creek, which include the ones that I planted last week, are really much more uniform germination, I guess you'd say, um, than the ones that I bought you know, at like Walmart or Lowe's or wherever. So I don't know if it's seed quality, if it's, you know, the changes in, you know, temperature and condition that some, that a seed packet that goes to a big box store would be experiencing or what. But, um, yeah, this, these seeds that I just, also the seeds from Baker Creek, I mean, I just got them last week. I know that they didn't sit for very long. So anyway, um, that's something that I need to keep in mind here, um, especially now because it's getting closer and closer to time to plant out my summer stuff. Um, I want to say, so our, our last frost date is in two days, one day, one or two days from now, like the average last frost date. We haven't had a frost in weeks. I don't think we're going to have another frost. However, our nighttime temperatures have still been getting cool enough that I'm going to wait to plant out my warm weather um, crops. I have, you know, tomatoes that could be planted out, but we're still getting lows down in the low 40s and they just aren't going to do that well under that situ in that situation. So I'm going to wait. Um, usually some some folks around here say you wait till Mother's Day. Some say like the first of May. So we'll just take a look at how um, how the temperatures are looking at that point. I have um, I'm I've just started some watermelons and some cantaloupes, which is what's going to go down here. Um, so we'll see what happens. I also noticed I planted some watermelon radishes, the ones that are red on the inside and white on the outside, and I wasn't thinking about it. But I noticed on that package after I planted them, they take longer than the, you know, 20 to 30 days that the smaller radishes do. So that's something else I'm going to need to be paying attention to here. Um, I think my next row is going to be more of the Easter basket mix from Baker Creek. And I also have a few French breakfast uh, radishes that I'll mix in there with those too because I know they're pretty quick. So um, that's the plan for it. Um, I'm going to do a quick little tour of the rest of the garden. So with the nice weather and we had some rainstorms pass through, I have a lot of weeds popping up. But I also have a lot of plants that might not be weeds. I have some things that might be volunteers. So I'm having a real tough time pulling weeds, except for the ones that I know 100% for sure are actually weeds. Um, but anyway, so let's, so I've got Lettuce here in the middle is doing good. Um, bok choy, spinach, and Swiss chard. Um, some of my bok choy has been dying. I ordered a soil kit. Uh, it hasn't gotten here yet. So we'll see if that gives me any clues as to what's going on. But what's there looks good. Um, Swiss chard looks good. That Swiss chard that you can see started inside. The spinach is pretty small and not a lot of it really germinated. Again, I don't know if this is a soil problem or what or it's also possible it's just taking some time like I said it feels like everything should be you know really big and growing but it's still pretty early so anyway um, I have more of the row of lettuce there 
Um, and then we get into these trellises. I replanted the peas on these trellises after the the ones I was given did not um, germinate well. And I just noticed this morning that they are just starting to pop up. So there's a teeny little baby pea. There's a teeny little baby pea. Um, so I was worried because it did take a little while. And again, impatience is overpowering right now. Um, but they are coming up. They're probably a little bit behind. I'm hoping that's not gonna matter because even when I do put the tomatoes out, I can just put them in between the peas or if I have to sacrifice one pea plant to put a tomato there, the tomatoes aren't going to um, need all that space before the peas are done. Cause the peas are gonna be done by probably June, mid June, early June, something like that. And that's really when the tomatoes are going to be taking off. So um, here we have, so this one I actually looked up with a plant ID app earlier today. I was looking at this and I was thinking that looks like it could be something that looks like it'd be a volunteer, but it also kind of looks like morning glory, which we do get a bit of. And I checked with my ID app and it is morning glory. So I'm going to be pulling these out. Um, the ID app actually said it, its first choice was bindweed and second was like some sort of morning glory. But I know we get morning glory around here because sometimes uh, I see it in our woods and obviously it spreads seeds. So I have a few of these I saw that I'm going to be pulling before they start um, climbing and getting into things. So plenty of dandelions, of course. Those I have been digging out if they are somewhere that I don't want them. They are edible. I know they're edible. I know you can use all the parts of them, um, but there's just some areas of the garden that I don't want them in. And here we have, and I have no idea how this happened. This would be red Russian kale. I have some red Russian kale growing out here in my garden. This is not where it's supposed to be, right in this main pathway here, but there it is. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Um, I've also got, see, I've got these different, this, this could be something I have. I'm a little bit disoriented because I moved my tomato trellises. So I was thinking, well, the only thing that could be by the tomatoes should be either um, tomato volunteers or basil volunteers, because that's what I plant, interplanted with the tomatoes, but I moved my trellises. So down here, that could be, um, there, I had ground cherries, I had some different peppers, that does not look like a pepper, but like, I mean, that's what was in this area. Um, I've got, I've had, you know, I had zinnias around here. I mean, anything could be anywhere, but just thinking about where fruit would have dropped. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So things that I'm not sure of, I'm mostly just leaving. I also have lamb's quarter out here and, um, lamb's quarter is an edible weed and it's very high in nutrients. So as long as it's not in the way, I'll be leaving it out here because I will harvest the lamb's quarter and toss it in anytime I harvest greens for sauteing or for dehydrating into uh, I make a green powder for smoothies or you know I freeze greens the lamb's quarter just gets mixed right in with those and it's very mild so you don't really notice it um, down on this end I've got kale growing there that I just kind of scattered seeds so they're not very neat or pretty or anything and then spinach I feel like the spinach is small but you know again I looked at old pictures and it's really not so here we have some spinach here we have some more morning glory where it does not belong and that's just you know I feel like it doesn't grow and it doesn't grow and then you come out here one day and it's grown you know three or four times bigger all of a sudden so um the peas that are doing well are doing very very well as you can see um, I actually I haven't seen any flowers yet but I see where I think they might be getting ready to flower I guess you'd say um, we had some really strong winds and a few of these did get kind of blown over I'm gonna try to hook this one here while I'm noticing it I'll have to come out and give it a little bit more encouragement here um, yeah, and then over here we have collards. 
red Russian kale, lactonado kale, and down here I've got carrots that are hard to see amongst the weeds. Um, that's on the to-do list is starting to get serious about pulling out some of these weeds. I have volunteer lettuce. Um, this was a lettuce area last year. I have very, very small, I need to get closer to see it. I've got beets coming up right there. There are, I don't know if you can see it, there are four rows of beets here. And I did a few different varieties. I did Kyoga, Bull's Blood, Detroit Red. Oh, and I got a yellow one. I've never uh, had yellow beets before, so I thought that would be fun to try. Now I'm also seeing what kind of looks like carrots in here. I planted tons and tons of carrot seeds last fall and had got like, I don't know, six carrots out of it. I mean, I probably planted certainly hundreds, if not up to a thousand carrot seeds because I planted them and got nothing and I planted again and got six. So um, I have what could be carrots right here. I was thinking it could be dill, but it doesn't smell like dill and it really looks more like a carrot. So I might have seeds that did not grow in the fall that have now germinated and are now growing, which is great. And this is actually a pretty decent place for them to be mixed in amongst. These are all my brassicas, my cabbages, my broccolis. Um, I transplanted some little kohlrabi starts right there, a purple kohlrabi. I've never grown kohlrabi before. Um, and then in the middle here, I am growing, I sprinkled some cilantro seeds. So there's some cilantro right there. And then um, possibly the most exciting thing for this time of year would be the beautiful strawberry patch, which is starting to have lots and lots of flowers. These are my potato trenches. I'm not seeing any evidence of potatoes, but you know, hopefully we'll see what happens. And then all the, all the beautiful strawberries with all the beautiful blossoms. And then over here I have onions, my first time planting onion sets. Here's a beautiful one right here growing nicely. I got a mixed set. It was um, white onions, red onions, and I think yellow onions. So like your three basic kinds of onions. So those are looking good too. Um, so yeah, it's been good. We had a big rain yesterday, so everything got a good watering and that's helping get all those weeds up. And now I just need to sit out here and painstakingly weed, you know, around all the teeny little beet babies and carrot babies and that sort of thing. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Um, so I have my starts out on my porch getting some sun. So let's go up and take a quick look at those. All right, so I'm seeing that these guys could use some water and I like to water them out here with the mist option on my hose um, right before I take them inside. And it's they've been out all day. It's time for them to get inside. But as you can see, all my gorgeous tomatoes here. Um, I've got just everything. I, I can't even sit in here and be here all day. Um, I've got some tomatillos. I've got okra. I've got basil, all my herbs. More tomatoes, lots of tomatoes. Um, I just planted watermelons, cantaloupes. I've got some cucumbers and different squash, some beans, some flowers, all kinds of stuff, as you can see. Um, some of it getting a bit big. <laughs> It'd be nice to be able to plant it out, but I'm trying to hold off a little bit longer. And also, up here we have, i am got these pots, and on top we have oregano, mint, mint, and mint. Um, this one has lettuce on the tiers on the bottom, and then strawberries, strawberries, and strawberries. So each of my kids gets one planter for themselves. That's gonna be theirs, and they get to pick the strawberries. Um, they got a bunch of little fairy garden decorations for Easter and they decorated those. Um, and then I also, since I'm over here, wanted to really quick point out my beautiful herb box, which is currently growing peppermint, cilantro, sage, and thyme. And we have been harvesting some herbs, mixing them with cream cheese and eating them on crackers. And my kids like it that way. So that's a good way to expose them to some more flavors. Um, 
So that's pretty much what's going around around here. I'm going to go plant some radishes. Thanks for watching.